Have you ever wondered why some grow lights are purple like this one? And do they actually work any better than white grow lights? In today's video, we're going to explain how and why some grow lights are purple, as well as look at three key reasons why we think you should avoid them. Guys, my name's Nate, I'm from Urban Leaf, where we specialize in helping city dwellers grow their own food and reconnect with nature. So listen, the short answer to this question about uh, purple grow lights is simply that they're made up of red and blue LEDs. When you mix them together, you get purple. But there's a little bit more to it than that, and that's exactly what I want to get into uh, in this video. Now, the traditional knowledge about plants and light has been that red and blue frequencies of light are the most important ones for plant growth. We understand that red light is important for fruiting and flowering, and the blue frequencies of light are important for foliage and leaf development. In order to understand how we got to that point, however, you do need to understand just a little bit of history uh, about LEDs and grow lights. Now, the very first LED in the world was red in color. It was invented in 1962 by a guy named Nick Holonyak, who was a General Electric employee at the time. By the 1970s, we had invented green LEDs, which when combined with red, allowed us to produce a yellow looking light. It wasn't until 1994, however, when a guy named Shuji Nakamura made the world's first blue LED. And so at that point, we had red, green, and blue, which meant that we were able to combine all three colors and produce a light using LEDs that looked white to our human eyes. So Philips, the big electronics company, they were the first guys to actually produce a screw-in type LED. That didn't happen until 2009, which means that even if you had the oldest screw-in LED in the entire world, it wouldn't even be much more than a decade old at this point. So how is all of this relevant to today's blue, red, slash purple grow lights? Well, I'm glad you asked, because the history of these grow lights has a lot to do with why we think they do not make sense for the at-home grower. And the first reason that I think you should avoid a purple grow light if you're growing in your own home, is that the economics of these grow lights uh, just don't make sense. Now, the early manufacturers of these LED grow lights, given that they could sort of separate the colors into different parts, they were able to essentially construct, um, you know, pretty basic light recipes uh, separating the red and blue. Now, given that, firstly, they did not know as much as what we know today about how plants respond to different frequencies of light. And secondly, at the time, LED LEDs were very, very expensive back then. They were inefficient, they didn't have a very long life, and they were not that economical. So because of these two reasons, what the early manufacturers of these LED grow lights decided to do is essentially leave out all of the non-essential frequencies, which means that they just focused on the red and the blue. And granted, they are, you know, very, very important frequencies for plants, but they're not the only ones that, that kind of matter. So listen, at, at a time, you know, I get it. There was an economic argument for this, but here's the thing, times have changed. LEDs have gotten way more efficient than they were a decade ago. And given how far this technology has come, removing these non-essential light frequencies simply does not have the same economic benefits that it once did. Think of it a little bit like this. A typical E26 grow light costs about $20 a year in electricity to run. Removing the non-essential frequencies, everything other than red and blue, probably only saves you about 10 to 15%. So in other words, you're saving, you know, maybe two or three dollars a year in your electricity bill. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm all about energy efficiency. And if we were installing these lights in a great big vertical farming operation, then sure, 10 or 15 percent cost savings would be a big deal and really important. However, for the average at home grower, the economic argument for red and blue LEDs just isn't there anymore. Yes. A decade ago, sure, it made a lot of sense. 
but the cost savings you get today from taking out all of these other frequencies of light uh, just aren't that significant. The second reason why I think you should avoid a purple grow light is that the red and blue frequencies are not the only ones that are important for plant health. Now, much of the traditional wisdom that we have uh, about plants and grow and lights and how they kind of connected uh, was developed well before modern LEDs were invented. Uh, a guy named McCree um, did a lot of the foundational work and research in this area, but he only had very, very basic equipment and he was only able to test plants' response to one frequency of light at a time. He didn't have the equipment to test different light recipes and different combinations of light frequencies. Modern LEDs make it easy to combine light. And that has opened up a whole new field of research that has looked at how plants respond, not to just one color at a time, but we're now researching how plants respond to different combinations of light. One of the guys who's leading the charge, uh, he actually also has a YouTube channel. I recommend you check it out. Anyway, his name is Bruce Budgie. He's a professor at uh, Utah State University. And some of the things that he, as well as many others, uh, are now coming to realize is firstly that UVA and UVB, which is less than 400 nanometers, that's really important for things like essential oils, taste and flavor. And hey, if we're talking about food here, I would have to argue that flavor and taste are quite important attributes, right? Secondly, you've got green light, which is in the middle. That's kind of in the 500 to 600 nanometer range. That's actually incredibly good at canopy and leaf penetration. It goes much further into the leaf of a plan than red or blue light is able to do. At the other end of the spectrum, you've got far red at 700 to maybe 760 nanometers. In other words, outside of what we measure as a PAR light, the PAR measurement of light is only 400 to 700 nanometers. But this far red, which is outside of that, is actually really, really helpful for cell expansion in plants. And it's also a particularly good complement to blue light. So listen, in my opinion, purchasing a purple grow light today basically means that you're saying you're willing to ignore the last 10 years worth of science and research on this topic. Do that if you wish, but personally, in my opinion, ignoring science and research is a little bit of a silly thing to do. The third reason why I think that you should avoid getting a purple grow light is truthfully, they're just not that pleasant to live with. Let me tell you a story about this. So back in about 2016, Rob and I got together and we were doing the first ever beta test of a at-home growing kit here at Urban Leaf. We got together about 12 people and Rob and his dad actually spent hours and hours putting together these handmade wooden growing kits. It was a you know pretty basic setup. But what we did is we divided this beta group into two halves. So six people got a unit with a purple grow light. The other six got a unit with a white grow light because one of the things we wanted to test is how, you know, did people like having these units in their home? Anyway, we were young entrepreneurs, really, really proud of what we'd built and put together. So you can imagine that by the end of this trial, once we learn that basically all of the people who were given purple grow lights had found some way to hide them, we were pretty disappointed. Like all of these people with the purple beta units, they'd either put a sheet or towel over them to basically contain the light, or they'd put them in the closet. And, you know, we were super proud of these units. We were excited about getting them out into the world and people were going and hiding them because they did not like the purple light. Yes, it has a certain cool factor, but I promise you that novelty will grow old very, very fast. And hey, if you want another reason to, to avoid these things, According to this article, uh, purple light actually makes you feel very sleepy and it's been reported to reduce sexual desires. So what's a better choice for your grow light? Here at Urban Leaf, uh, what we recommend is a full spectrum of grow light. We think it's going to lead to happier plants and happier people all around. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about how we evaluate grow lights over here at Urban Leaf, uh, then check out this video. Uh, and if you're looking for some recommendations on where to start with your first grow light purchase, uh, then check out this one.